All right, everybody, I wanted to make a video in response to several questions I've been getting lately, which is great. I'm glad people are asking the questions, um, especially because when they ask the questions, I definitely know that a lot of other people are thinking the same thing. So thank you for asking the questions. You know who you are when you see these questions. I do appreciate it, and I do want to address them in this video. So this might be a little bit of a longer video uh, because I'm going to cover 90 days of trading with the red light, green light strategy in the futures market. If you want me to do sniper and red dot uh, as well, I, I'll do that on another video maybe. Um, I don't want this to be too long. So I'm just picking the highest frequency trade setup right now I have for the futures algorithm and, uh, to address these questions. So the first question that I get um, is because most of the time when I trade um, futures, it's at night and overnight. Um, and that's for a couple different reasons. One, I'm either working on one of my businesses and I will, a lot of times I'll do that work in the evening. Um, or I'm not in the United States. I'm in Japan or some other country. Um, so a lot of times you'll see those trades uploaded at nighttime. So what happens is a lot of people are, are saying, you know, it looks like you only have setups that happen overnight. And some of them are using the words unrealistic for traders. So which I think what they really mean to say is not practical for them. So if you're a trader and you travel a lot, like when I'm in Japan, the futures market is perfect because I can wake up, trade the futures. The normal equities market happens in the overnight hours. So, and I still trade, you know, the equities market a little bit in the, the overnight hours. I'll do it for a, a short period of time, but I don't want to be up at four o'clock in the morning trading. So not every night. So I can wake up and trade the futures market. Not everybody lives in the time zone of New York Eastern Standard Time. So the futures market can work really, really great. And what looks like the overnight hours for you may not be the overnight hours for someone else. The other thing is some people have daytime jobs and they don't get a chance to trade during the day. So the futures market works out great if they're going to trade in the evening. Some people work overnight, but they work from home doing call, you know, answering calls and doing call service and stuff like that. Futures works out great because they can throw up the futures market, do both jobs, make a little money trading while they deal with uh, answering calls and stuff like that. So it depends on your time zone, where you're at, your lifestyle and your goals. Not every strategy in the stock market will work for everybody. You have to find a strategy that works for your lifestyle and your goals and your financial situation. So yes, futures market may not be for everybody, um, but it definitely can work um, in the overnight hours, but it also works in the daytime, normal trading session, in the, in the evening. It works, my, my algorithm works in all those different time slots. And what I'm gonna show you here is how many trades we actually get in those different time slots and what the win-loss ratio is for the overall system and in those time slots. So if you're thinking about trading the algorithm and you always see my videos overnight and you're like, oh, I'm not trading at two in the morning, I need to sleep. So yes, I would agree with you. Um, you need to sleep for sure if you're in that New York time zone. But um, you'll see what happens if you try to trade it just in the day. Any, any strategy you're gonna trade, doesn't matter if it's mine or somebody else's or one you create, you really wanna vet that strategy for the time slots that you're gonna trade it. So you might be trading somebody's winning strategy and they trade nine to 12, but you're gonna trade from 12 to four. And maybe from 12 to four, that's a losing strategy. So you need to vet everything for the time zone that you're planning on trading. All right, so is it practical or realistic uh, for my algorithm in the futures market to work? Absolutely, it's, it's realistic. Is it practical? That depends on you. Where are you in the country? What's your lifestyle goals, right? So it's not for everybody. And then again, you'll see how many trades you get during the day and all that stuff. All right, so another question I get is, um, I will save the 30 minute question later. Uh, dun, dun, dun. Okay, so first question was, is, is it realistic to trade in the overnight hours? So I think I answered that clearly already. The second question is, do trades happen in the normal trading session between nine, 30 and four. I'm going to say normal trading session between eight and four. So we'll go with that because there is pre-market um, in there as well. So I'm going to say that'll be the, the trading session and the daytime trading session. So do trades happen in that? Answer is yes. I'm going to show you that right now. Um, okay. So the other questions I get is uh, do trades happen during like, you know, normal daytime trading hours? So yes. So if you're looking at the chart right now, this is why I broke it up. All these gray boxes are the nighttime hours. This is from 10 p.m. to 8 a.m. 
So right here you have your evening session, which is from 6 to 10, we're going to call it, right? Normally we just go all night, but we're going to block out that for the night. So at least so you can see what the difference is. So 6 to 10, and then 8 to 4. That's what you got here. 6 to 10, 8 to 4, and you got your overnight hours in the middle. So do the trades happen during normal session? That'll be this box over here, if that's what you're wondering. So every time you see a gray box, look to the right of it between that and the dotted line. That's your normal trading hours. And then what is the win rate for the strategy, for the, for the future strategy? So we're going to go through the red light, green light, and you're going to see. So here we go. Uh, for my students who are watching this, yes, I know some of these red dots. So green dots are winning trades. Red dots are losing trades. Some of these red dots are winners, small winners, but they're winners. But I put them red anyway because whenever I do this, I would rather see worst possible case scenario than to have best case scenario and give myself a little bit of an inflated number that, you know, that I personally may not, may or may not hit. I'd rather err to the side of losing trade than to lie to myself, give myself a winning trade, even if I didn't, you know, if this is a back test or if I'm just looking to see what's going on, because then I'm not going to create an accurate trading plan. If I don't have an accurate trading plan, I'm going to lose all my money. So what's the point of lying to myself? So I'd rather uh, err to the side of a losing trade and have a better trading plan. So if, if uh, you're one of my students and you're seeing red, red where it kind of is a green trade, um, that's why. Okay, so for those of you who are not familiar with this strategy, I'll just give you a quick rundown. But if you want to know more about it, it's free. All my trading classes are free over on my website. So there's a, a link in the description below. Click that link. Take you right on over there. All my education classes are free. If you did, if you wanted to trade with the algorithm, you, you could purchase the algorithm, but there's plenty of information there that you can learn to help you with your own strategy. Um, so it's definitely could be worth your while to go check it out. Um, and then again, you get more detail on this, but I'm gonna give you a very high level, quickie overview of how this works. Okay, so starting over here, when we have a red bars, they go to green bars, it's indicating a long trade but we need permission and we get permission when the little dashes are above the white line for a long trade. So, and that has to happen within two green bars. So right here, it happened on the second green bar. We're good to go there. So, or e even, you know, in the first green bar, we got good to go. So the next thing is shorts happen when we go from green to red bars and we have our dashes below the white line. So got it. Long trade is red to green, dash is above white. Short is green to red, dash is below white. Very simple. So that's the algorithm giving it, indicating there's a potential short trade setup, and then we have to get permission or long trade, and then we gotta get permission. And then there's other things in here which I didn't account for, so my students will see that as well, and be like, those aren't losers, but I'm again, just making it simple, error into the side of caution is we have different there's a there's one candlestick pattern that I call tower candles that shows up that we don't I don't always trade or if I do I trade it a little differently and then there's also when we have like a, a candle engulfing all the candles before it then we don't usually trade that setup either so those are the two candlestick setups not really in the candlestick pattern family okay so once the trade happens th this grid that you see here is drawn up based on this little marker we got the little marker we draw it from there to the candle that created that marker, the close of the candle that created that marker, and that gives us our grid. So that grid tells us where our targets are and our stops are. So in here, you're gonna see these purple bars. That means I put those there because I wasn't sure if we got close to a stop or not. Um, sometimes it's very obvious we didn't get anywhere near a stop, like uh, right here, short trade, it pulled back. This is not a stop. Short trade, pulled back, and then went down, no problem. Our stop was up here. And our stops move. They start pretty far away, um, just in case we have a spike happen. But then they start moving as the trade develops. So a lot of times we get, you know, when we do get stopped out, it may not be um, that much of a loss. And even when we do get stopped out with that much of a loss, there's a lot of opportunity for what it's called a speed bump play, and that instantly recovers a portion, if not all, of your loss. So again, all those details are at 2020daytrader.com, or just click the link below and take you over there. But for the sake of this, to answer these questions of do we get trades in the, in the trading sessions? Is it practical? Um, is the overnight trades good? You know, all the different stuff. What's the win rate? Those kind of things. 
And I got one last question we'll hit at the end, which is a bigger question. But um, so for that, for that discussion, we're just going to zip through this. And then you can kind of slow it down if you need to. So we're going to go through it a couple times. So this first time through is this is all every trade, every opportunity possible. And you're going to see all those opportunities. And then you're going to see what the win rate is. And then we're going to break it down to eliminating the overnight hours. Okay, so we start off, we got three winners, go into a loser, right? We got short here, and then it just went straight straight against us. So we had that loser, winner, winner. You can see all the winners in here. Winner, winner. So I'm just going to scroll through, through this kind of fast, but you can always pause it or slow the video down. I'm um, just trying to save a little bit of time. Shrink this down so you can see it. And then for my students, you'll really be able to look at this and know exactly what's going on in all these. All right, so you can see a lot of trades are not happening in the overnight hours. So some of you, I know you think that trades only happen in the overnight hours because that's what every time I'm trading it, but a lot of times they don't. A lot of times they happen, you know, normal session. You can see here, normal session, you know, after hours, not after, but like after our session, but not overnight yet, you know, normal session. You can see a lot of these normal session. Normal session going into the evening, morning, normal session, normal set. Well, this finished normal session, but triggered in the evening. So this one was, you know, finished in the morning, but triggered in the evening. So you wouldn't have taken these if you were sleeping. This one where you would have traded and you would have avoided a loser, which would have been good. All right, cruising, cruising. It's a lot of trades here, a lot of trades. I think like 100 trades over 90 days. All right, moving, moving, moving. See, like our starting stop was here, so I wanted this. To, you know, look like we might have almost got there, so I just put that so you can see that we clearly did not get anywhere near there. So a win for us is uh, two things: either it hits, you know, one this one bar right here, or it crosses fifty percent. Once it crosses fifty percent, we move some stop and we move to take some profit or move our stop to a profit area. So once we cross 50%, there's profit for us. It may not be a full trade, but there's still a nice profit that adds up. Um, and then once it hits this bar, we start looking to exit on that bar. And we there's a strategy that I use, um, which you've seen on my YouTube channel probably, or, or if you've taken my classes, you've seen it, to try to squeeze some more out, um, which sometimes we do. Sometimes we get two or three bars out of it. Almost got stopped out there. That was a crazy trade. So we had kind of like a trade within a trade here. We have another trade to execute it right here and then put a green ball on it. Let me put a green ball on it. Um, it depends on when you got in. You were probably, you know, if you were in this one, you were hanging out the whole time um, over a span of like two days, um, you know, a little bigger profit. But if you were in this one, then of course you got that winner on a little smaller profit. Stop out. I hate it when we get two losers in a row. That's like such a bummer. And again. So it does happen with the ES, MES. You get two in a row sometimes. So I don't uh, I don't treat it like a, uh, a premium or super premium trade. Like I don't increase the share size after uh, a loss because it can't ha hit you with another one right after it. After two losses, though, a different story. I'll increase my, my risk on that third trade because uh, more than likely it's going to be a winner. As you can see in 90 days, it's usually just two losses and that's it. 
All right, cool. So that's it. It comes to that. So you got to see all those winners. So let's show you what that tally looks like. All right. So instead of doing like all the little lines like this going all the way down so I can see how, you know, how many winners in a row and losers in a row and all that stuff. Um, for this, I'm just trying to save some time. So right here we had um, 80 winners and 17 losers. So we scroll down to the bottom of that. That gives us an 82% win rate. So it's pretty sweet. That's a pretty awesome win rate. That's trading every opportunity though, right? So that's another thing you have to ask yourself with your strategy or with someone else's strategy that they're they're boasting, you know, an 80% win rate or 70 or 60 or whatever it might be, you know, 90. How do they get that win rate? Is that trading every opportunity or is that trading every Monday, right? So it could be two very different things. So make sure you ask that right question or when you're doing your own strategy, you think about that. So, okay, so we got 82% win rate trading every opportunity but what if we don't what if we don't trade the overnight hours because if you're on the east coast you're sleeping during that time if you're in japan you're not trading during the normal session you're probably trading the overnight session blah 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 so let's see how this thing breaks down all right so i went all the way back to the beginning so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to go ahead and delete all the trades that happen in the overnight hours and then uh, i'll bring it to you so let me go ahead and do all that deleting so you're not getting bored and then uh, i'll be right back Okay, but before we move on to that piece, just want to show you if, and you can go back and double check this so you can see that it's straight. If uh, if I only traded nighttime, say I'm, I'm in Tokyo for the next two months and I'm only going to trade the futures market in the, you know, the US nighttime hours because it's pretty much daytime over there. So with red light, green light, I would have had 25 wins and four losses trading it in the, in the nighttime hours between 10 and 8 a.m., 10 p.m. and 8, 8 a.m. And that gives us an 86% success rate. So that's pretty awesome. That's really, really awesome. And red light, green light is my higher frequency trading strategy for the um, for the futures market with the algorithm. And then sniper and red dot are much slower frequency or lower frequencies, but higher success. And I'm getting that with red light, green light. So just overnight hours. So now let's see what happens if we just looked at the uh, the normal you know the trading normal trading day, which is this big block right here, and then the uh, evening hour between 6 and 10 right here. Okay, so I'm going to run through this again. Um, let me center this out. Go straight to the back real fast, and we'll come back forward. All right, again, so 90 days. Um, so I'm going to run through it again, and what I did is I removed any of the markings that took, that, um, took place during the overnight hours, unless it started in the overnight hours, but we were still able to jump into the trade during the normal trading session. So as I go through, I'll stop and point some of those out. Um, a green balls, winners, and a red balls, losers. And a winner is anytime a trade um, started and went into the overnight hours, I basically set my target, and that's it. So the normal rules have us moving our stop, um, depending on what the trade does. And sometimes we get out for less than the target, um, to you know, as, as normal rules. So, but trading with the overnight hours, nobody wants to get up in the middle of the night. Even though, like for me, I can have Thinkorswim alert me when when things are happening on the chart, so that I can know about it and then I can come back in and check on it. But let's just say, to keep it simple, um, once we have a trade that executes going into the night, like this one right here, so we didn't finish this trade, right? Didn't hit the target, didn't get stopped out. This is a starting stop, um, and we're, we're not going to move the stops overnight. We're sleeping, so basically it has to hit the target for a winner, or still be an active trade, so that in the morning. We can then pick up and move our stops and whatnot. So that's kind of how we did it. And uh, you can see what the results are here. And then let me just scroll through here kind of quick and you can kind of slow down, speed up, pause, whatever you want to do on your end to check it out. So scrolling through. So, you know, again, like this one right here, we got into it um, expecting it to be, oh, so let's do that. So this is a, uh, a losing trade. So when you have a green dot and a red dot in there, it's saying it's a losing trade um, because we would have never stopped out in profit at the 50% mark. We would have never took profit. So we would have had a full loss here and it would have been a losing trade. So whenever you see green and red, it's because we weren't able to follow the rules because it's overnight and we took a loss. So that's what that indicates. So here we go, scrolling through. So like this one, we started at the, uh, you know, whatever time it was, uh, six o'clock, roughly, 6.30. And then, you know, it went down 
just about hit its target. Could have just jumped out here, called it a day, right? Because we don't want to be trading overnight. Um, that would have been a winner. Um, but if we didn't and uh, we were still in it with our target in or stop in, then we would have got, we would have woke up to a winning trade. So I'm leaving my cursor on the screen so that you have that up and down line. So hopefully that'll help you get some reference if you need it. So scrolling through. Yep. So there we go. And again, over at 2020 Day Trader or the link below, you can um, get all the details of the strategy over there. All my courses are free. You can check it out. And then there's other other things there too, like the trade log that I'm using right now to show you the percentages. And also, um, you know, it's a whole there's a whole bunch of stuff in there. Trade calculators, journals, all that stuff. It's all in there. Um, a link to that will be in the description below as well if you're interested in getting yourself a trade log, a journal. And not just a trade log and a journal, but one that comes with calculators and scaling ladders and you know risk management tools and stuff like this. So you can do some back testing like I'm, you're seeing in the log down there now, putting the numbers in and seeing what I'm looking at. So all that stuff's there over at the links below. All right, ripping through here. Dun, 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 dun. So I'm just going to let it scroll through and then we'll pick back up at the end. All right, so here we are at the end. So now if we go and add up these numbers, again, this is the trade log. You just saw 56 wins and 12 losses. So 56 wins and 12 losses gives us an 82% win rate, not trading in the overnight hours as far as not entering or exiting a trade in the overnight hours, but putting our stop in for you know our target if we go into the overnight hour. Okay, but if when the, there was two times in there that we got stopped out in the overnight hours for a full loss, which would be a 2R loss. So we're going to say we had 14 losses instead of 12. And some of our wins weren't quite full wins, and some of our losses weren't quite full losses, but we'll go with this just as average to make it simple. And I added two additional losses to this, and I didn't even, as I scrolled through, my students that know the what they're looking at saw there's a couple wins in there that I didn't even uh, count in here because I didn't count them on the first round. So I want the numbers to be you know, equal comparison. So I didn't go ahead and just say, oh yeah, if I missed those two wins, let me put them in. Um, I didn't, I just left them off so all the numbers can be equal. So we do have more wins in here than this, but um, is what it is. I don't wanna go back and redo that first section. So I just leave them off, keep the numbers um, so the comparison's equal so we can see the actual value. So adding those two losses, which would have been you know, two R, basically would have lost two times what our risk was on two of those trades we're still with an 80% win rate. So, you know, even with partial wins and partial losses fixed in, even if we went down to like a 76% win rate, it's still pretty epic. But 80% is basically where we're at with those uh, with those overnight trades, um, with the overnight trades being taken out. So I know some of you didn't think that trading my futures algorithm would be practical because you didn't want to be trading overnight. Um, and, then, and I get why you you think that way because you the only, only trade you really see me posting on YouTube are overnight trades because I predominantly trade futures market when I'm traveling or working late at night. During the day, I focus on the equity markets and other business stuff, so I don't always trade futures during the day. But you can see clearly it would be very profitable. So now let's punch in the numbers off of what you just saw if we only had the daytime 
um, trades during normal market hours or if we decide we're only going to trade between 6 and 10. It's the only time we're going to enter a trade. So let me punch in those numbers for you so you can see what that would have worked out to be. And then you can go back and, and double check it if you'd like. Okay, so before we go into those numbers, I just want to give you a couple of little things here. So this line I drew here on this piece right here. So this trade activated in the middle of the night, right? We're not trading in the middle of the night. So, but at the same time, it's a, it's a short play. So in the morning when I would have came out to the computer around 8.30 or even uh, 9, I would have saw it here, not down here. So now I can get in at a discount and I have a better risk reward ratio. So I would have, I would have traded this even though it started in the night, I would have traded in the day. So it's something I teach over at the class so that um, so you can see that it's there and then we would have got a winner out of it. So that's some of these that start in the night. Um, this one over here as well started in the night, but then you can see during the day when we when we were eight, when we were here we were able to get in at a discount before it got the 50% marker um, and we we're able to make a trade out of it. So um, so some of those are like that. So going over the day the day night trades, the statistics on that just so you know how I arrived to them. Um, if the so the, my markups happen right at the edge of this line is where the trade starts, where the trade starts, right? So right here, this is where the trade started. So there, you know, this one started on the daytime side, not the evening side. So this is eight. You can see in the bottom because my cursor will be on the screen um, when I was scrolling through. So you can see on the bottom it was 830 and then you get to 1600 on that line going into the evening hours. So I'm um, just, you know, this is the daytime. This is the evening time. Um, again, the red circle with the green is because, you know, normal trading rules, this is a winner, um, set it and forget it basically for anything that's going into the overnight hours for profit or loss, um, this ended up being a loser. So right here, you can see the beginning of the line starts on the right side of this dotted line. That's the six o'clock, um, the six o'clock to, um, to 10 o'clock frame. So that's what you'll see there. Anything that starts on this side of the line is uh, considered a daytime trade that just didn't conclude until the evening hours. So the, for the, 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 to make the statistical part easy, um, you, the numbers are based on when the trade started, not when it concluded. So it's the nighttime trades, not overnight trades, but six to 10 trades started on this in this area and the daytime trades started in this area. And again, you can scroll through this and see, you know, with your lifestyle and goals, how things would have played out for you. But I'm just trying to give, you know, there's we can go through this a hundred different ways and make this a three hour video. But I just want to give you a, um, a little example and an answer to the questions that were asked. So the question of, you know, do you is this only trading at night? And if it is, it's not practical, which actually it's very practical at night. You saw the success rate on it. And just because you know, not everybody lives in the New York time zone and not everybody is daytime people. It may not be realistic for an individual, but it could be very realistic for somebody else. So are very practical for somebody else. So the other one was the win rates. So we're covering those right now and you're about to get the win rates for this. It's pretty awesome. And then um, and do trades happen between 930 and four. So let's go now and look. And again, you know, I sc scrolled through it already. So you can just play that back and go at your pace. So let's go look at the numbers. So when you're looking at, you know, this was trade all the time numbers. Some of these kind of overlapped, so that's why you know if you're if you're trying to add up these numbers with these numbers and these it may not match because some of these are a little bit overlapping, or right on the border um, of of the time frame that we we talked about. Like some trades, you know, we're saying we're not going to take unless they start at six o'clock, um, but then some of them started just shy of that, so maybe we would have taken it, or maybe we didn't take it because we we're trading daytime hours only and it was just about to click six o'clock. So some of these are a little bit overlapping. So that's why if you're trying to do a tally of all these numbers, it may not uh, work out. All right, so AM only, the, the 8 o'clock area to, to 6 o'clock area, we had 45 wins and 11 losses. So with 45 wins and 11 losses, we're still at 80% success rate. So yeah, you could trade this during the normal market hours for the most part. You know, you're a little bit earlier, you're a little bit later maybe. But yeah, you could trade that during that time frame if you wanted to. You know, for the traders who only want to trade, you know, 8 to 12, maybe the equities market's better for you. Or you can go back and scroll through here and see what would have happened to you if you're only trading 8 to 12. So everything has to fit your lifestyle and goals. All right, so AM, very successful, 80%. So in the PM, we actually, I'm putting 9 here because one of these was um, really borderline. 
So I'm gonna say nine because I'd rather default to the lower number and have the win rate based on the lower number so I can be, you know, do a better um, accurate trade plan. Always default to the worst whenever you're, um, at least that's how I do it. All right, so with nine, nine wins and two losers, we still at 82%. And this is trading only entering trades that are between the six o'clock and 10 o'clock timeframe. And anything that got you know held overnight, we didn't go by the normal trading rules. We went by set it and forget it. So, and that's the results that we got. So you can see all these results are in the 80% range. And if you traded every opportunity, you had 82%. So win, 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 all the way around with red light, green light, future strategy, um, for those of you who are asking those questions. So the last question that um, was asked that I did not answer yet is the time frames. So this trades on the 30 minute candle. My sniper and my other red dot trade on the, well, the other red dot trades on 30 and the sniper's on the four hour candle. So what I heard was, you know, several times now, well, it's on the 30 minute candle. So that means you gotta be sitting in front of your computer for like all day, like watching paint dry basically. And no, that's not accurate. So the way I do it is, you know, every, I'll either set alerts with thinkorswim to like text message me or I'll just come and check on my chart every 30 minutes. So literally I can walk in my office, take a peek at the 30 minute marker, go back out and play with my kid, go do other things, whatever. Come back, check out on the 30 minute market. So literally it takes, when you add that up by on the day, you're looking at like 10 minutes a day to trade on the red light, green light strategy. And then once I'm in a trade, I can set my stops, I can set my targets, all that. And then I can right click on the screen and I can do this before I'm in a trade too, just to have thinkorswim tell me what's up. So right click on the screen, go down to create alert, single, and then let it tell me when when the t you know when the candles have moved above or below a certain level. And you can set parameters here. So I don't have to be here paying attention the whole time. Like once this moves 50% of the way, I get a text message and an email letting me know that it's moved 50% of the way. I should come manage my trade. Or it's starting to go against you. Do you want to come and check it out? Um, you're in your target area. Do you want to come and check it out? Like I get text messages for, for it. So I don't have to be ever in front of my computer. Once I set, and then I get text messages when I enter the trade and I get text messages and emails when I exit the trade. So once I get a text saying I've exited the trade, I can come in and look to make sure I got all, all my positions out. Everything is good. I didn't reverse my trade by accident like I did the other night. That was stupid, but thank God we recovered from that. But so stuff like that. So I, literally 30 minutes, pop my head in, see what's up. Hey, there's a trade. I sit down. It takes me about a minute execute that trade maybe say i got in early so it takes me five minutes execute the trade put my alerts in put my stops and targets in because the algorithm's giving me all my targets and stops put all that in and then leave and then if i want to check on it once in a while i could check on it once in a while or i can wait for a text message or an email so really like futures trading is like maybe 10 minutes a day of my time except for when i'm making content for youtube then then it takes me a lot of time because i want to comment on what's happening and all that stuff so it looks like I'm spending more time. I mean, I am spending more time because I'm creating content. But as a trader, I can trade my futures red light, green light, and spend maybe 10 to 15 minutes a day. And it's uh, and you can see the win rates that you get from it. And then you can pick your bucket of time that you trade, or just come in whenever it's available to you and uh, trade. But as a trader, you always want to vet the time frames that you're gonna trade or your what you're gonna plan on doing. You want to vet that to make sure that it works out for you. Cause you could take a winning strategy and be a losing trader if you don't um, follow the plan of that strategy. So if the strategy is every opportunity and you don't trade every opportunity, well then you can be a losing trader. If it's only in the morning and you trade in the afternoon, you could be a losing trader. At the same time, look at your strategies. Like if you have a strategy that, you, that for some reason is a losing strategy for you, but you liked it, you're like, oh, I thought this was gonna be good, but I'm losing. Maybe it's a time frame that you're trading it. Maybe what you discovered is actually really good just not on the time frames that you're trading it. Maybe you have to eliminate one of those time frames. So something to think about um, to check out with your own strategy. Um, if you want me to do this with the sniper and the red dot, let me know. It's very time consuming for me. It takes me about four times as long to do this as it is for you to watch it. So um, I'm not gonna do those unless, uh, unless there's a request for it because I don't wanna do it and then have nobody watch it. That was a waste of my time then. So, um, but yeah, so there you go. Hopefully that helps you out. Hopefully that answered your questions and your thoughts. Great questions. I really do appreciate them. I know other traders are thinking the same thing that you're probably thinking. So it helps me clarify things and get the word out because I don't realize what all of you are thinking. So I do appreciate that. And I do thank you. And I do look forward to more comments and to more questions in any way I can help out. All right, everybody. Have an awesome weekend.